hey what's up Param here from Picasso Animation College and today I'll be teaching you how to make a pretty decent fluid explosion so let's get started and uh, I need to mention that I'm using Mac on 12 so just keep that thing in notice you might not have some options in 2010 but in 12 you have some lot more options than the previous one so let's first of all take a 3D container this is a 3D container I'm switching up the grid for my visual purpose increasing the time range then we have to add an emitter to emit the particles so I'll be adding an emitter that to a volume emitter and a sphere emitter already it is fitted to that I'm just gonna go and translate it little bit downside. Yep, looks fine. All right, then we just have to animate the density. First of all, I'll show you the simulation. This is in wireframe mode. Now this is in texture mode. You have to press six for that. All right. So now I'm gonna go and animate some attributes like density at frame number 1 I am keeping it 30 I have set it a key heat also to 30 set a key go to frame number 10 alright go to frame number 10 and make it all the way to 0 heat also to 0 now just sit back and watch the simulation it's coming something like this increase your res to around 40 and just go back and play the simulation ok it's coming pretty good so first of all just make all the boundaries x, y and z to none now almost all the attributes are affected of this emitter fluid emitter right now we have to just decrease the drop of 2.1 then we have to go to fluid attributes set the temperature to dynamic grid because we are making a temperature driven blast all right then I'm gonna go down to dynamic simulation I'll add a little bit damp that's optional and I'm gonna go set my high detail solver on to all grids and I'm increasing the simulation rate to 1.5 and I'm switching on the auto resize this is a very helpful thing as you can see we are almost getting the simulation that we want right now we'll just do one thing we'll go down to the lighting section increase the shadow as you can see now a self shadow of the container is switched on and i'll increase the shadow opacity and you can see the difference here only all right so this is what we have till now have a look at it fine now I'm gonna go in content details. In content details, I have to go into buoyancy C, temperature buoyancy that too. I have to make it to a very high figure, around 350 or 320. Let's take 330. I know this because I've done this lots of times. As you can see, now it's coming really fast towards up direction pretty good so far now we have to like increase the dissipation temperature dissipation to 1.277 or to be exact or something you can keep it around 2.5 oh sorry 1.5 fine just have a look again hmm now we're gonna add some turbulence in it in temperature basically it will make the colors of this 
black little more table as you can see it's very turbulent in the beginning and here it goes something like this so far so good then we are going to go in velocity which will be exactly here and then we'll be increasing the swirl to around 5 for something 5 to 7 to 8 will be a nice value then we have to go in buoyancy make the buoyancy neg uh, negative like you can keep it 0 also but I'm keeping it minus 0 0.5 then you have to add a dissipation to density because this thing this density part has to fade off somewhere right so I'm adding a dissipation of point 2a 3 anything you can keep it just go back and play it okay so so far we have this thing now we have to go in the transparency just we have to drag it little bit to that side as you can see in the viewport here what transparency is doing it's actually making it little bit more dense so I think I'm happy with this value right and we have to make this color temperature based alright and first go here make this thing black all the way to black and this thing all the way to a little bit grayish whatever you feel like I think this gray is enough for me so so far we have this thing let's see the simulation alright just we'll go back to auto reset options and we'll make this maximum resolution to 500 so that it does not compress and we have to reduce this value to 0.1 and we can increase the margin till 30 or so now as you'll see the size has become pretty large and my system is about to literally die so what I'll do I'll reduce it I'm tweaking this value of auto resize margin to around uh, 6 so that every step it gives at least 6 units for this container to expand right so far it's coming not really bad but it's good okay now we're gonna go to shading part of this thing we'll go here in shading you just have to do one thing increase the value that's V here to around 3 or so so that becomes really bright and this is based on temperature as you can see go back play once alright people now we have to just go back and play with the opacity curve so this is how I'll show you we have to make some points which will define the edge normally a blast curve is something like this but that totally depends on you how my, how you want your blast to look like the difference between this point and this point is the smooth edge of the blast as you can see right so looks nice yeah I think we are done so far so let me just zoom in and make a play blast at very high risk I'll go back make it to 120 and I'll be back with the play blast
all right people i'm back with my play blast and uh, this is how it looks let me loop it for you as you can see we are getting pretty decent blast this is made in res 80 this is something this is kind of okay for basics so try to make it and all the best thanks for watching this tutorial hit like if you like it thank you